Hey guys, Steven here, Fanatic Perspective. Going to 5,000 subscribers September 7th, Texas LSU. What are we, uh, 15 days away from kickoff against Louisiana Tech, August 31st? We are. We, we are. are coming in. It, it is right around the it corner. It is flying in, man. <laughs> it is flying in. So, guys, we got a lot of comments uh, in our in our previous video. First off, just to continue, thank you to Zoe for uh, hopping in as a guest. We will have her back. Uh, she was plucked up by the SEC network. Like they do for all, <laughs> all of our color commentators. You're right. So, uh, but, but jokes aside, she will be back uh, throughout the season to provide some more student insight. Uh, but in terms of the comments, wanted to address your hair. Oh, yeah. Uh, so we, we kind of glossed over it last video and didn't say anything and wanted to see who would notice. And many of you did. Um, you know, very astute followers. So, Tran, what happened to your hair? So, actually, I, I've done this four times. I know you've known me for years. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, uh, a woman was like my second mother. She got cancer, and the only weak point I ever saw her was when she lost her hair. So, what I do is I, I grow it out the length, and I donate it to Wigs for Kids uh, in her name. So, I, I know she wouldn't want me to do that kind of thing uh, because she doesn't want to ha have light shine on her uh, and take away from the actual charity that I'm doing but the, I, I still do it for her because I know that's that's the that sh children are a huge cause for her that's awesome yeah, man so that's what that's what I do and uh, you know man to man friend to friend I'm really proud of you for for doing that and it's something that uh, I know you hate to have like attention on yourself or yeah. anything like that, but uh, anything we can drive to the cause, and um, I'm sure we'll have some some links in there uh, for for the cause in, in the description box below. So I appreciate you sharing that. Appreciate it. And um, you know, so those of you now know what we're, we're having to trans hair. Mm -hmm. uh, speaking of you, you had a great idea. Yep. That we want to implement on the channel. Uh, I mean. I, I I'm sure it wasn't a huge innovative idea, but no. I was just, but I was, uh, go ahead. I was texting back and forth with Stephen like we do daily, <laughs> um, and I said, "Hey, why don't we uh, why don't we do like a top twenty important player countdown from twenty down to one?" And it was kind of it was kind of uh, on the twenty first day, <laughs> so, <laughs> so it was uh, we, I, our schedules couldn't sync up for that. So we decided this year we'll do ten. So we're sitting right now at fifteen days out. So. Uh, five days from now, we'll we'll be starting a countdown. Every day, we'll kind of uh, we'll kind of release one video for each who each we player. think that we think will be the most important to the team for this for this upcoming season. Yep, all the way to game day, we'll release one. So you guys uh, look out for the fanatic perspective top ten players countdown. Um, really, really excited about it. It's going to be very, very short curated content, about three to five minutes each video. Uh, just highlights on on said player, uh, but it's something that it's a list that you know John and I will have together um, in terms of what we think. Mm -hmm. So really curious to get everyone's thoughts and, and chime in on that. Um, before we get to the schedule, so because this is this is going to be part two of our schedule breakdown. Like I said in the in the previous scheduling video, we're going to break this up into four quarters, right? So this is essentially the second quarter. Um, consisting of Oklahoma State, West Virginia, and Oklahoma. So we'll cover those, uh, you know, at the end of the video and go go down our initial kind of super early thoughts mm -hmm. on those games. But before we go to that, I wanted to just talk about some fall camp updates as well as um, – and I know somebody's going to ask me about recruiting. We'll have a separate <laughs> video for the recruiting stuff. We have a lot of stuff going on recruiting. That deserves its own time. I'm not going to dedicate time right now. 15 days before the season to talk about recruiting. Recruiting is a 365 day, you know, business yes. and deserves it. its own yeah. <laughs> deserves its own space. But right now, I'm, I'm focused more so on on our football team as it currently stands uh, of folks that are uh, on campus. Right. Mm -hmm. So fall camp, uh, we had the first scrimmage. Offense won, I believe they said on the last drive. Um, had some really good, you know, some, some good videos from Malcolm Epps and some other guys that, you know, uh, stepped up. Uh, some good things I saw from Deshaun Jameson. So one of the things that concerns me, though, well, you actually brought this up at our yoga class last night. Uh, after yoga. We don't yeah. talk during yoga, yeah. but you brought it up after yoga. We're not yoga. those guys. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you brought it up after yoga about uh, some of the big plays that you were seeing 
on the defense and some of your concerns. So I just wanted you to speak. Yeah, so I I get what they're trying to do. I'm trying. They're trying to highlight our our offense as much as possible because Sam is our Heisman hopeful. I know what they're trying to do. But it's a mar- it, and it's marketing. Yeah, yeah it's it, but it it kind of worries me that there's so much secondary breakdowns. A lot of these videos are one of our corners getting mossed or breakdown in coverage off of a quick scramble where the they just leave the tight open wide open mm-hmm. in the uh, in the end zone. Things that like that. That was a heck of and, a catch back. Yeah, yeah, it was, but <laughs> it, it was also a bad pass by the quarterback too. So so he, he made a fantastic catch, yeah, but it, it's the fact that the secondary is breaking down and it it doesn't look promising to me that it they're they're technical yet or they're actually fundamental right now. Then again, you know they like like we said is that they are highlighting the the kind of top plays that they do. Mossing someone is a fantastic play. You know people talk about that. People mm-hmm. talk about the one handed grabs, things like that. But to to me, from the outsider's perspective, it's a little worrisome. I mean, I understand the worry, and 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 to your point. It seems like it's a lot of offensive highlights they put out. They have put out some defensive content, but mm-hmm. for the most part it is offense heavy. And then they said the offense won the scrimmage. But, it, it, you know, with social media, you, this is – and us – because we're, we're doing this with the Cowboys too, mm-hmm. right, where yep. they're releasing camp footage. Somebody, especially in our fan base, we're always going to look at it like there's two sides to the coin. Like, wow, that was a great play by the offense, but what the heck is going on with the defense? You know, or vice versa. Like somebody gets a pick six in practice – we're like, wow, that guy is stepping up. But then it's like, my quarterback's throwing interceptions. So it's like that that balance. So I would say that. But but to your point, though, um, you know, when the coach comes out and says, I'm looking for two starting corners, and you see bad corner play, you're concerned. Yeah. And I think that's valid. I think that's valid. Um, and when, when, when Tom Herman also comes forward and says, hey, we, we got open spots on, on, the, on the corner position. <laughs> that's... That's a little disconcerting. So. Um, I know that's your big concern. Yeah. My big concern is the injuries. Of course. And and we brought this up in and, and our concerns video. And I hate to, to you know continue to beat a dead horse. Uh, but this is something that's going to impact. Because at the end of the conclusion of our, our schedule series, we're going to you know mm-hmm. actually give our win-loss predictions. And right. that will be our final video heading into Louisiana Tech. But I... I the injuries and in, in, in at what point do you start to label some guys with the fragile tag? Um, and I'm not trying to throw shade at Zach Shackelford or Keontae or even Brennan Eagles or, or anything like that, but it just seems as you, it's the usual suspects, even Kirk Johnson. And like my heart, like honestly, like knowing we the type of person Kirk. Kirko is yeah, and yeah. all that type of stuff, like I literally could go into tears about the situation he's been faced with since he's been at Texas, it's sad. It's sad. And at some point, you just look at the young man, it's like your body's just not able to hold up. It's one thing after another. The, the you know, trying again, the surgeries, you know, the rehab. Like, you're spending more time rehabbing than you are on the football field. And we're seeing this starting to happen with our center. Yeah, and then on top of that, like, you're hitting positions where we don't have much depth. Oh, yeah, we don't have You know, who's taking, sen- who's taking snaps at center? Is it Derek Kerstetter? Are we going to go to the Rafiti uh, Gurmai? You know, and I'm not trying to, you know, I, know, I, know I forgot the brother's name last time, but, like, seriously, like, but, like, seriously, like, we saw saw the spring game, and I, and, and that was something that I highlighted then. We, Elijah Rodriguez is not here to be the human mandate anymore. No, he's not. So this is something that could Im- significantly impact the season. Now, I know – you know, these the guys we mentioned, Zach Sackerford with a foot sprain, Keontae with his knee, these are minor so injuries. The, the, I want to touch on the knee real quick. Okay. So I actually Keontae or just a knee Keon, in general. Keon. Okay. So um Keontae, when they came forward and said that he gained twenty pounds, I was worried about his knees at that point. Cause his body's used to playing around what was he like two oh five? Two oh five, yeah, about two oh five. But he's now at two twenty five and someone who's had knee problems just gaining that extra 10 15 pounds when you plant it's hard it's so much harder for your body to adjust to an extra 15 pounds than it is to your normal walk around body weight and i was really nervous about it uh, i'm really it's only the bone bruise but um it's it's something that needs to be kept an eye on and i honestly think he probably needs to drop about 5 to 10 pounds 
I think I think him gaining 10 pounds is probably good for college all-purpose back to be around like 215 mm-hmm. honestly for his size I hear you man and, and you know we all, those are always concerns yeah. and and especially since he dealt with the knee last year mm-hmm. you know he wore the brace last year and and you know to his to to his point because he spoke to the media uh, at the beginning of camp and and he made the point that I wasn't injured in high school like this was something that was new to me mm-hmm. but now here we are second year at Texas you're dealing with the knee again after we thought we were behind that was behind him and it's just you know inevitably you know something could could happen with the quarterback or or, or Collins knee you know and 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 it's just like. A lot of these guys, like Brandon Jones, had a they had serious surgeries. But this isn't just like you know ankle surgery LA. on a defensive back is pretty serious. <laughs> it's serious surgeries, like. and I just I, I that is something where I know we're covering it, but I don't think it's being discussed enough when you know you're factoring in how this season could play out. You're gonna guys are gonna go down regardless. No matter yeah, who's team, this but is, this it is just seems sport. as though we have some v- potentially very injury-prone guys on our team, and I, I, I don't like slapping that. They gotta, but they gotta stay healthy and prove that they're not injury-prone guys. I mean, it's bottom line, and that's just how their body responds. It's not, you know, necessarily. Um, I don't think Zach Shackelford is at fault. I think. Um, he's done everything he can to, to keep himself right. I know Yancey McKnight is doing everything he can to keep these guys upright and making sure that their bodies are strong. And, and Tom Herman talks about uh, using muscle as a shield and all those type of things. But something is, you know, especially with the – it's just the usual suspects, right? So uh, something that's concerning, and, and we'll talk about that more when we do our predictions because I know it's something that will factor into my predictions. Uh, in terms of the schedule breakdown, we'll get to – this is going to be, like I said before, part two. Uh, so we'll have Oklahoma State. Um, you know, we, we concluded with that Rice game in Houston. Yep. We should be coming back to Austin. Will we have a um, – I'm not sure if that's off of a bye or whatnot. No, it's Do not. You, that okay. We have a bye after this Okay, game, okay. Uh, before the uh, so West Virginia. we'll have Oklahoma State at home. Um, and you can kind of do, um, you know, take Zoe's spot and do do yeah. the intros. Yeah, so Oklahoma State, we, we all know. I mean, um, we've had our issues with them for the past, what, six years? And even before that, we would all, they'd always get up on us, and then we'd have to play catch-up and have one of those miraculous fourth-quarter comebacks. Um, however, I think this is a little bit different of a year. I mean, they, they are losing – a starting quarterback that played very well against us. Mm-hmm. Um, the issues that we are having is that this is a run first team and they do have a pretty good up and coming running back. Oh, yeah. say it? Yeah, Chuba. Say it? There Chuba. you go. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, Chuba, Chuba had, uh, I think you said, yeah, he it had was nine, nine, nine carries, carries for 80 yards yeah, for against 80 us. Yards. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Had, a, had a good game. That's with uh, Justice, Justice dominating yeah, us, too. Yeah, Justice had a good um, game against then, us. Had a good game against us. You know, before. Ty, Tylen Wallace is coming back, and he had, what, 870 yards against us, roughly? Um, but, no, I, I think he was in the two hundreds, honestly. But, uh, we almost but, got him yeah. the uh, Belin- Belinikoff yeah. last year. And then we have the 87-year-old senior, uh, Mr. Stoner, mm-hmm. back. So I For mean, if they year. have, if they have unlimited a eligibility, co- yeah, if in they the have, slot. yeah, apparently, if they have a decent quarterback, uh, their offense is going to be very potent. You know, I I feel that we can score on this team, uh, but you know, it, they're they're going to be dangerous, and we can't, we definitely can't overlook them going into the bye. I look at this game a lot like the game against TCU last year Mm -hmm. where they kind of had our number for a while and we went into that TCU game really locked in to end it. Mm -hmm. Tom Herman got them up. It was at home in Austin, which this game will be where he said, you know what, these, you know, some of y'all were here during that. And I'm talking about TCU. That is some of y'all were here during that 50 to three run down, beat down. And and then the 45, we need to get this bad. Yeah. We need to get this bad taste out of our mouths. Right. And, 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 reestablish ourselves in in this you know in the in the head to head against these teams. I think Oklahoma State will be that game for us this year. I've heard some people even whisper about uh you know potential trap game here in this spot. 
Um, I don't see that. I, I see them being either. really locked in, especially after what happened last yeah. year. Last year's game, they they were a better football team than Oklahoma State but last year. But they were year. embarrassed for three quarters of the game. And they were just not locked in. Yeah, embarrassed. They're embarrassed. Yeah, and but the thing is, it's like we got ourselves back in the game and like that mm-hmm. because because of the talent level and because it's like, yo, when we actually focus. And it, about A.J. Green. Oh, yeah. Well, I was going to get to A.J. Yeah, Green. Sorry, sorry, yeah, sorry. so A.J. Green, he's another one who's back out of DeSoto. Uh, he had a very he he got he a probably dominating game. I think. Um, I think of everybody that that guarded Colin last year, he probably one on one had the best, you know, he was man just coverage. Physical with him, he was just absolutely yep. physical for yep. him. Yeah, maintain good pad handle. level, absolutely. So that's going to be a good test for Colin uh, to to show his improvement against a guy and AJ Green, who I believe is is getting all Big Twelve honors uh, preseason. So. You know, and, and Gundy, we got to be Gundy, man. Yeah. I mean, and Tom and, and all these guys, the previous staff, we've struggled with that. Uh, every time I think of Oklahoma State, I think of that 2015 game with the with the refs, where they just had it out for for Charlie and, and our team and called defensive holding on a run play on Puna Ford and all hell broke loose and. You know, I, it's just one of those things where we've got they're they've you they're get a over pest. The <laughs> and they got to get yeah. over the hump. Yeah. You know, we, we have these moments in our program, whether it's the the stigma with Kansas State at Manhattan, right? <sighs> you know, we will, we had that losing streak. We had the losing streak with TCU. This is one where we got to dispel this year. I think we will be locked in. Um, what I'm concerned about is the game the following week. Well, that is two, that is two weeks. Oh yeah, weeks. I'm sorry. We're both after, after the bye. That yeah, day. after the bye. And, and the reason why I say this, and we're going to Morgantown, West Virginia, which is a very similar situation after that Baylor game last year where we had two weeks, mm-hmm. went into Oklahoma State, hostile environment. Uh, depending on our record, let's say we, we've beaten LSU. We're going to be undefe- – we could be, we could potentially be undefeated heading into the West. At least we all hope. Right? You know, I know, I'm not, you know yeah. hopefully, hopefully we're undefeated heading into the West Virginia game. Now, it's going to be later in the season where we kind of have a better idea of what Coach Brown is doing. But it, for those of you who, who did not see Neil Brown coach at, at Troy, uh, he's the real deal. And, mm-hmm. and I know, you know, Coach, coach Holgerson went to Houston and, you know, he was a whole, you know, handful for the Big 12, especially offensively. And, you know, many of us are looking at, well, they graduated, you know, Sills and Will Greer and, and Gary Jen and all the, the all those wide receivers. Um, it's still a tough environment. Uh, they do have Austin Kendall coming over from Oklahoma, so they'll have some good quarterback play, you know, under Neal. And I think, you know, that could potentially be, you know, a very, very tough game for Texas, uh, you know, if, if we're not locked in or if we have one of those, if we fall asleep at the wheel again off the bye week. So, I mean, what are, what are your thoughts just, just yeah. heading into the to the West Virginia? So, so you know the coach better than I do. I, I honestly mm-hmm. can't tell you his philosophy. I think you said he was offensive-minded. Mm-hmm. Um, is he going to be able to replicate the, the offense that they had last year, which was, what, like 6,500 yards? Um, I, I mean, I'm they not lost sure. a lot I mean, of guys. They, they, yeah. lost, they lost their – all Big 12 left tackle. Mm-hmm. Uh, they lost Will Greer. Um, they lost. They lost. Uh, was it Sills? Right. Mm-hmm. They David Sills, the fifth. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah. The, the only big name that actually affected us, I think, last year, uh, is uh, Kennedy McCoy. That's coming back. And but they are coming off of a bye, and a lot of people don't talk about the uh, travel arrangements heading to Morgantown. People, people talk. Uh, people don't really know that we. You actually have to fly all the way up to Pittsburgh, and then drive. I think it's a, like an hour and a half south to get to the to the mountains and, th- and something like that. And apparently, it just wears on you. It's a very long day, and um, I think they fly up on Friday normally for road games. And uh, it's 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 something that. Is he going to be able to get well, his team up for? Him? I know yeah. I mentioned the concern. The one thing I will say is this: Tom, the coach and the quarterback have made that trip that you're talking mm-hmm. about, and they've gone up there and won when yes. Sam was yeah. a freshman. Yeah. Um, and I know some of you will say, "Well, excuse me, that will game not got knocked. He out got knocked drive. out with the finger, yeah. uh, courtesy of Brandon Jones yeah. at the goal line, and you know they, their backup wasn't ready to play, but." You know, Sam did have a good day that you know on the road and, and 
that was actually the game where we got bowl eligible. <laughs> it seems so long ago, but that was like, you know, bowl eligible for the first time in a couple of years. So and that's going to be the test of the maturity I mean, yeah, and yeah, the leadership on yeah. this team. If, if I mean, you get out of there. That's not a game where I'm looking for them to go and even blow them out. Just get out of there. Yeah, and you and you can't business be, and leave. Can't be looking forward to the next week. Right, and that's and that's yes. the other reason why it's a trap game is can't be looking forward yes, to the next week. Yes, um, we, which is who? <laughs> Oklahoma. Can I ask you a question about Oklahoma? Go ahead. With them losing four offensive linemen, probably one of the most dynamic, if not one of the most the most dynamic uh, quarterback quarterback or mm-hmm. athletes to ever play the quarterback position. And losing one of the most dynamic wide receivers from last year. Are you as afraid of Oklahoma as you were last year? Yes. Okay. Not well, okay. I, I just lied. I'm not as afraid because Kyler Murray's not yes. there. Let's be real. But that that my that of that level of respect I'm not even gonna say it for I'm not I'm not afraid of Oklahoma mm-hmm. I wasn't afraid of Oklahoma last year I picked uh, we picked I picked Texas to beat Oklahoma mm-hmm. when we played them in October last year yep I did not pick them to win in the big 12 because I didn't think we were gonna I felt like the way the teams were we were gonna split that but I'm not afraid of them what I'm saying is in terms of level of concern of what we have to defend I don't think they'll be as difficult to do def- to, to defend in terms of the 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 scrambling and passing ability of Kyler Murray. However, because of that coach, because of Lincoln Riley and how he's been able to coach up a Baker Mayfield, how he's been able to coach up a Kyler Murray, uh, and then, you know, even looking at, you know, what what we saw from Jalen Hurts this spring, he looked a lot better mechanically throwing the football. He is a quarterback whisperer, Lincoln Riley is. There's no doubt about that. He has two running backs that you can make the argument of all Big 12, mm-hmm. uh, Kennedy Brooks and Trey Sermon, uh, both of whom, you know, we, uh, you know, we've had some problems with in the past, right? You know, the CD CD Lamb, possession wide receiver, still Stop there. it! <laughs> Stop it! Yeah. Average 18 yards yeah. a catch. He's possession not guy. possession. What? Possession guy, right? So CD Lamb is, um, you know, CD Lamb right now is the best wide receiver in the Big 12. He is. He uh, is. No, uh, and he is. it's um, no knock against uh, Colin no. or anything. And or, I want or I want to be, Yeah, or, but yeah. CD C- in terms of from a route running perspective, what he's able to do after the catch, what he's able to do uh, bubble screens, and just what he did last year, um, that that's just my opinion, right? Also, you, they, all Big Twelve. Uh, they have all Big Twelve too. tight end, right? Uh, uh, Grant Cacatera. Mm-hmm. They still return Creed Humphrey, who some say was the best offensive lineman they had. Mm-hmm. So. Texas will have their hands full. Now, again, it's a big game. We're loaded. We also, to some degree, we're built to beat them in mm-hmm. a lot of ways. We recruit to beat Oklahoma. I, I really do believe that this staff, the way they've constructed, especially Todd Orlando defensively, he they've, they've given Lincoln Riley fit since Houston. It's just one of those things where styles make fights, mm-hmm. and we really are built very well. One of the, the, one of the only reasons why Oklahoma was even able to pull out is because of the physical abilities of Baker and Kyler the last few years. Because even even with those guys and how good Oklahoma's been and how consistent they've been, all those games have been close, win mm-hmm. or lose. Yep. Right? Even going back to when Shane Bouchot was the starting quarterback. We were we we'd lose what, 29, 24, you know, like it was it was it was neck and neck. You know, Sam Ellinger's first year, you know, at one point it's it's a neck and neck uh, uh type deal, right? So Tons of respect for OU. Um, I want to beat the hell out of them, absolutely, and I want to, you know, reestablish ourselves in the conference. But objectively, it's a handful. Yeah. Oh, of course. Um, I'm I'm definitely nervous about the mind mind child that they have. I mean, um, I have a friend that that has been ragging on Jalen Hurts. He will be. Should I leave him nameless? Leave him nameless. Okay, I'll leave him. He's been ragging on him for. For years, <laughs> for years, and now he comes to Oklahoma, and he's, he's even stated, "I can never show my face again at, at DKR." If, yeah. if, if, uh, His if name rhymes lose. with sack. <laughs> yeah, but um, I mean, this th- that kid's won a, a national championship, so he's played at the highest levels. This this game's not going to be too much for him. Um, I'm not as scared of their offense. I'm, as 
I'm not scared of again. I'm not scared of it. Their their wide receiving core is going to be excellent. Yes, they're they're wide and they're because running backs. They have, their specialty they're positions adding, are going to be fantastic. They're adding. So f- for those of you who are like, well, they don't have Hollywood Brown anymore. The hell is that? They don't have Hollywood Brown. <laughs> <laughs> it sounded like the room was caving. <laughs> <laughs> they don't have Hollywood Brown anymore. But what they added in the wide uh, with their freshmen and and, and, and some and, and there's another brother they have coming up too. It's crazy. They're in, they're going to be insanely talented at, the, at that position. Now, do I think that Jalen Hurts can make some of the 50 – like the throw that Baker made where they beat Chris Boyd a couple years ago where it was like a 55-yard mm-hmm. dot. Yep. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. In the deep the middle deep, of the field. Deep post. Yeah. yeah. Like Jalen Hurts is not making that throw. I think that's an interception if Jalen yeah. Hurts is throwing that ball. So I do think Texas will be able to benefit – off of that somewhat I do think again going into the game where we will have the better quarterback the question and the question is and, and we have a lot of OU fans that follow us and the question here is what's that defense going to look like Alex Grinch coming in uh you know shuffling some things around I think they're going to be in, in a in a in a 3-4 look somebody can correct me if I'm wrong on that um but what's that defense going to look like because the OU defense was abysmal last year mm-hmm. and, and and I'm not again I've I've I feel like I've been very, very respectful to Oklahoma, but I will say this. If not for injuries with with what Sam Ellinger was doing with the shoulder, I think that Big 12 championship game looks a lot different. What was our best play that we ran all year? Quarterback power. Yeah, and we couldn't run it. We, we ran it three ran, times ran, in the first quarter. Yeah, and we got it. We got it. We, got we, it we had some touchdown, and we got a touchdown off yeah, of it. But I think we averaged over 10, 10, a, 10 a ga- a play. In a game that. like in a game like that, going back to that Big 12 championship game. That would have been the time where Sam would have had 20, 25 carries like he did in the Georgia game mm-hmm. when, he, when, when he was healthier, right? And now the offense, obviously, with the analysts, and we're trying to get away from having to rely so heavily on our quarterback run game. But to my point, where our team was at that during the season, we needed you know, that. We needed that. Yeah, we you know, needed we that, didn't yeah. have that, that, that extra juice to, to, to push us through. And we were still tied through, you know, we were still right there through three quarters um, against a team that ended up going to the college football playoff, right? So this, this – Which goes I, back to your main concern, injuries. <laughs> yeah, it's injuries. It, 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 you know, it is. It is. Uh, but I, I would love to hear from the Oklahoma fans, mm-hmm. yeah. you know, defensively what the plan is going to be because – to going back when we were healthier, we had no problem putting up, you know, f- six touchdowns and moving the ball like crazy on that Oklahoma defense. That w- that was not an issue for us, uh, especially in the first game. Right? We were up. People forget we were up twenty-one skunk at one point. Right? So, um, love to see what they're doing with some yeah. of the moves on, on the defensive side of the ball to get better. Uh, how they plan on dealing with Colin Johnson and 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 all the weapons we have. We we gave. A, a lot of respect to their weapons and their backs, but we're going to have a handful for them as long as we're healthy, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so appropriately, it's going to be a shootout. Uh, that's the three games. That's That concludes the second quarter. At that point, they'll put us halfway through the season. And, you know, again, you guys chime in on what you th- the guys' thoughts are on the games. Um, if we're, you know, if, if, if we're – kind of talking about the injury stuff too much. I'd love to hear everybody's thoughts and feedback, right? Um, John, any other thoughts before we conclude here, man? I'm just really appreciative of, of you and, and your efforts to yeah, of course, help man. this channel. Yeah, of course, man. This is fun. I mean, this is too easy. Too <laughs> Talk easy. Talk about ball, man. Uh, um, no, I'm, I'm just excited about the, the season around the corner, 15 days. I think the countdown that we have on my board downstairs is, I think, 15. 15 days, which is Hunter Lawrence. <laughs> I don't Hunter know which day. But, um, Who were some other 15s? Trey Holtz was 15. Yeah, Trey Holtz. Chris um, Brown currently. Mm-hmm. Was David Pino 15? He was. David Pino. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, five more days. We're going to start that, that countdown. I'm, I'm sure next – we'll probably do it in – Succession of the, uh, Marcus Washington's wearing fifteen. <laughs> Thinking of all the, 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 the next the next three games too. I don't I, I don't know. We'll probably put the next three. Oh games yeah, the, the, yeah. Then. Next three. Well, that'll be the third quarter. And uh, yeah, we're cranking out contents. We're flying to five K. We're appreciative of everybody. Yeah, that, thank, thank you to everyone uh, who's been sharing it. We saw that uh, there was a little post going on about. Uh, on twenty four seven about it. Which That's really awesome. cool. Yeah, so whoever, yeah, whoever shared that, I really appreciate it. Uh, reach out to me because I didn't couldn't see it on the on the thing, but um, yeah, absolutely, guys. Well, yeah. that concludes it. Horns always up. Always.